You're listening to the Super League Pod. It's episode 130 of your favourite rugby league podcast. And as usual, we'll be bringing you feedback and shout outs, news from around the world of rugby league, taking an exceptionally hazy look back at the World Club it's Challenge. Not hazy, we're champions. Champions, Wigan, and Mark will be giving me a good old fashioned thrashing as we do the Super League Pod trivia quiz. Strap yourselves in, kids. We've got a lot to get through on your podcast, the Super League Pod. So, hello everyone, welcome to episode 130 of the Super League Pod. One of the first things you'll notice this week is that both Mark and I have quite gravelly voices. Wouldn't you say so, Mark? I'd, I'd say I'm, I'm a little bit tired, but if, if it wasn't for the joy I'd be running on empty right now. We've come, uh, we've come through the other side of the World Club <laughs> series and the meet-up and, and being out and about in Wigan and I'm sure we'll, I don't know when we want to get to it really, when we, when we talk about what's coming up, I'm sure you'll lay out the, uh, our plans for the evening, but we had a brilliant day yesterday down at the World, Clubs, uh, World Club Challenge Let's talk in about Wigan, the, didn't we? Talk about the- Periphery to the game now. Yeah. Shall we? Okay. Well, it started really as you when you picked me up, didn't it? It did. And uh, the Facebook, the uh, sorry, the Twitter live stream, Periscope in. That was a, a surprise to me. We went live on Twitter you. in my. I was. I felt resplendent in my uh, in my shark costume. And you made quite the stir. You were. Uh, Comment, mentioned a couple of times on Sky Sports and uh, in the footage. Um, right and. Barry didn't didn't give us any props or out though. He didn't maybe he didn't recognise me from inside yeah. my shark suit. Maybe yeah. maybe that was uh, maybe that was maybe yeah, that was, yeah, it was. A shout out now, I feel. But no, I'm only kidding. But um, <laughs> you were all over the internet as well. As we found yeah. out at half time, we were in the in the beer, in, sorry in the in the queue for the toilet. Yeah, I've been um, I've been turned into a meme, which was quite cool. A couple of memes. That actually. was brilliant. The uh, first minute full time. Yeah, one that was on. And there was, a, really, there was uh, a Joe Facebook. Burgess one as well. So yeah. it was just yeah, it was tweeted by the the Wolf Pack, wasn't mm, it? Who were yeah. on board? We're, we're running with the pack now because they keep. Uh, Liking our tweets and getting in touch and stuff. So yeah, we've you know. obviously got exceptional taste in uh, in, in podcasts. There you there. go. But no, it was, it was a cracking area. A good few beers. We bumped into a lot of listeners as well, didn't we? Let's let's go through them. Big Dave Cantrell was there. Dave Cantrell, right, is infinitely fascinating to me. Yeah. As a, the more time you spend around him, just the more stuff you find out. That's just mm. like he was telling us a story about how he used to be a keen rock climber until he broke his ankle yeah. one time. Not rock climbing, but walking back to the car from the rock climbing. <laughs> <laughs> but he was the only one on the trip who could drive, so he still drove home with a broken ankle. That's that's Dave Cantrell. He's a monster. And then after that, we're talking about political philosophy soul. for about half an hour, finding out where we diverge quite. Mm. Quite sharply in some some areas, mm. but having a great old chat along the way with that, it was it was remarkable. Dave Cantrell is an absolute joy to to be around every time. He is, and there were other people there who were also absolute joys to be. Of around. course, sorry, I just wanted to tell the Dave Cantrell ankle story. Of course, I think the biggest controversy of the day, however, that for, that we need to make Super League Pod listeners aware of is that we have in fact both been mispronouncing Macio. <laughs> According to the man himself, it's about the third or fourth time we've bumped into Chris at different at different events. Most often at Wigan, and as he was leaving, I asked him to settle the bet in front of everybody, and he kind of sort of took the rug out from under us both, really. Didn't him he? and him and Dom. Him and Dom Hodgson started smirking, so they'd obviously been talking about this before we arrived. Yes, but it's um, McHugh Mc, McHugh. McKeone, I, I think he pronounced it. McKeone. But surely it's still McEwen to, to me. McKeown. He'll always be McEwen to me. McKeown to me. I forget now which one of us says which, to be honest. You say McKeown. I say McEwen. I say McEwen. <laughs> McKeown, McEwen, Let's call the whole thing off. But, yeah. So he, he was there, whatever his name is. Dom Hodgson um, tipped up with his shark hat on and his, uh, and his Leeds Rhinos training gear. It's always a pleasure to bump into Dom and have a... And have a good little chat. Well, it was the first time him. I felt like well, the proper first proper conversations I've had with Don, but it, it seemed like seeing an old friend yeah. still, like it does with with a lot of the listeners again well, regularly it. when we see them. Yeah. So that was that was great to have a bit more time checked. It. Found out that his missus is so his father in law is big into trains, hmm. um, and his missus Heather is in it. Yes, is too. Um, Doctor Hodgson, to your eye, yeah. yeah. 
And uh, my, obviously my, well not obviously, but to anyone listening other than you, my, my father-in-law's big into trains and then my missus likes the railway artwork of the 1930s and 40s and stuff and it there inspires some of the stuff at our wedding and yes. all exciting stuff. Yeah. And so of that, course, was a nice ta- that was a nice thing to chat about. Yeah. And of course John and Nadine as well, who were... Uh, I expected to be here for the recording, to be perfectly honest, given how, <laughs> given how enthusiastically Johnny was planning on coming up from Liverpool to be involved, and he'd, he'd planned to bring Nadine along, and she could sit on the couch and have a brew and chip in here and there. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed he didn't get in touch with either of us, but I am led to oh, believe... I spoke to Johnny I'm, today, Well, yeah. exactly, I'm led to... Well, you, you do tell them, there might be some... Like, there might be a reason behind it, might there? Well, he, he, wasn't, he, was, he wasn't fit for work today, as most of us were, who celebrated our world championship status, and right. obviously, friend of the show, Cass, was there meeting... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. listeners as he, as he often gets to on yeah. his level excursions out that's it uh, and we also met um, Steve Mascor didn't we before we did we did yeah, yeah. Who, who kindly hosts our show on his Radionomy White Line Fever Radio mm-hmm. stream yeah. so that was great to get to meet him mm-hmm. and you know feel like we were legitimate for a, a, a second T- time touching the hem of his garment <laughs> yes by getting to spend time talking to the the legitimate actual journalist that we spend <laughs> that we share our time with so, yeah. so that was good we're, we're gradually building contacts in the journalism world now with Baz and Steve Mascord and Dan Fowler who's Again, just leaving us in his. Well, Ethan O'Gorman started writing for Ethan the uh, uh, as well. Man and stuff. We're a, we're a re- we're a veritable suppository of repository. Even I'm so tired. We're a veritable repository for all these rugby league journo types to uh, to come together and and and, yeah. and and be involved in the Super League. The one thing uh, I remember Steve commenting. There will be some people that think we're a veritable suppository, but uh, well, there was one thing I remember Steve commenting on was it how what she notices the interaction we get from the listeners mm. and we were saying like yeah that's really the foundation for our show and why we started wanting mm. to share like views amongst fans a little bit more freely in this sort of format yeah um and that's a good segue, isn't it? Into that is a tremendous podcast event. That might be. <laughs> I the, picked up a thing or two. That yeah. might be the best, the best segue you've ever put together. You're you're coming along nicely. Well done. Yeah. So before we get on, obviously, we're going to talk about the. There's there's a bit of news to talk about. Yes. In fact, much more news than last week. Yeah. To roll through. Pretty busy week. We've got three different segments to our game reviews this week with the two World Club Series games, the two Ch- Super League games, and then the other results, which will include some Challenge Cup and Championship. And championship. And the Australian League One Cup and Championship yep. chat. Then we'll look forward to next week's games. But before we do all that, Feedback and shout outs. Who's been getting in touch this week, Mark? Well, Colin Render was the first person to hit us up this week after last week's show. He said, I have a fit. He got in touch with us on Facebook. That's mm-hmm. facebook.com forward slash Super League Pod. I have a theory on why JJB gets loads of marker tackles. He's too tired to run back 10 metres when he's marker and finds it easier to just chase the ball down from marker. If the ball gets passed further out, then he's not in the play, play anyway, so there's plenty of time to get back in the defensive line for the next one. I know it's a negative way of looking at it, but next time JJB is on, watch him closer. Still impressive to get that many marker tackles, but just a different way of looking at it. Well, I will try and look at it now, but I still think if you go, he's, he's still going strong at a, at a, a ripe old age, <laughs> JJB. I'm disinclined to take too much away from the guy. To be perfectly honest with you, the last look if he's coming in, two in a third man in from behind as the defensive line stops the runner is still helping hold the momentum and get that guy to the ground. So it's still a big effort. Still effect, moving backwards and forwards. Yeah. I think it's it's yeah. it's filming. but it's one of those things I won't be able to unsee now. You know, like the line in the FedEx logo. Once you've seen the arrow in the FedEx logo, yeah. you can't not see it. So now I'm going to be watching out for it all the time. Okay, we shall see. Alan Walker, nice to see he's okay. Some classic, uh, some classic Alan Walker here as well. He goes, bet the tester. This is referring to the story we spoke, spoke about last week about Tony Gigo. Yes, he said, bet the tester is in on the pay of French Union. <laughs> You'll see some top fourteen offers coming in. Two lot have a coke head and a wife basher coming in. Tony G is innocent. Well, we shall see. Now then, who's the next one? Let's have a go at this one. It's Wally Frogmore. Yes, and he's and this is the the. the a bit of people celebrating themselves, which is great. He finally got a question right in the trivia. Hazard, which Brown is remarkable. Frogger's. Yeah. Hmm. So, and it was before the last clue on Luke Lewis that he he scored that <laughs> mark up. So well done, Good man. Um, darts at Mitchell Darts. He's uh, becoming quite the trivia front runner. We'll see how he does today. Hmm. Uh, today with today's round. Um, I need to do a round of questions that have no NRL links whatsoever to see how Dart stands up to those ones. But yeah. we'll 
well, well for it, got the second trivia answer after two clues, like in the way, like in the new way of the games being reviewed, mm. Tom once again. So that's some feedback on our new fan to use first, which I think is. Well, it was the way to go, I yeah. think. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I'll, I'll hold my hand up. I wasn't sure when you suggested it, but it's. Uh, I liked it. Yeah, I me too. It worked well. Uh, Lee Whitnell said, sorry, Paul Michael Craig said, got Luke Lewis on the second clue and the connection, but didn't get the Bulls play a really good addition to the pod. Lee Whitnell uh, said, it would help me out a lot if your guess the player spot was based entirely around the game between, from October th- 2013 to present. It wouldn't do me a tremendous amount of harm, Lee, mate. I could, <laughs> I could get on board with that if that was the new rule. Um, Mark at Wilco2205 said uh, to me, he can't believe I outed... Uh, Ika Hifo was a smart dream team option he was going to be a secret weapon there you go he scored 82 points last week he's, he's, he's had a very strong start to the season hasn't he yeah and not just in in real terms in terms of his impact on the field as well yeah. but um, Sarah McKenzie uh, who has also had a good season when it comes to the predictions which we'll get to later on mm. says part of Owen Hughes's pragmatic approach which we spoke about last week Dissension in the family right? It's because he's only been a fan for a couple of years rather than having been indoctrinated into how harshly treated Hull FC always are. <laughs> she also gave us a bit of feedback on, on her old man who we talked a little bit about last week. She said, to be fair, the old man did move to Hull when he was about eight, so he has had a fair amount of time to acquire a Hull accent. The old man also wants it known. He is third generation black and white. Not quite sure if that takes us all the way back to 1865. Getting into 1800s though, aren't it? I'd have thought. Yeah, fair play. Um, no, no. No, because Sarah's dad was eight when they moved to Hull, so that would be the starting point of them being black and white. No, but he must have... Scoots and Helen must be no older Well, he's first generation Percy's. black and white, so maybe he's saying he's... that his parents and then grandparents were. That would make him third generation black and white, wouldn't it? Yeah, good point, actually, yeah. So that would probably get you, you know... So obviously... Certainly back to the yeah. late 1900s, wouldn't it? Certainly. The early 1900s, mid 1900s. Early 1900s, sorry, yeah. It's, good, it's a good record anyway, they're halfway to yeah. 150 years. That's very impressive. Yeah. Um, okay, Elliot Wrench says, Super League Pod is back on it, liking yes, the are. fan reviews lots more this season. Mm. Yeah, there was loads last week and uh, plenty again this week. Obviously, with the World Club Series game being on the, the World Club Challenge being on Sunday afternoon, there was a limit, limited amount of time to get those ones in, but plenty still on the Super League games as well, which was great yeah. to see. And a few in on the other games uh, that went on this weekend, so that's, that's cool. We'll get to mm-hmm. those later on. Dr. Bob Phillips said, loving the positive and negative impact stats. Nice idea. Uh, Bernard JKD, he got in touch to agree with you, Tom, a couple of times. He said, I agree that Martin Ridyard, Ridyard looked really chunky, looked like a part-time player, frankly. Also agree that Super League attendances were decent. All three matches on TV, at least, looked very well supported to me. There you go. There you go. Always a pleasure to hear from you, Bernard. Who is... I like Bernard's sort of alternate universe that he lives in, though. Like, he'll tweet us on a Sunday about a game that happened on a Thursday, and I completely have forgotten what he was talking about. So he was saying something about Josh Jones trying to claim a oh, try. Oh, was, wasn't he? Yeah. And I was, I, was, I was racking my brains. I couldn't remember the... the We're a bit more linear than you, Bernard. <laughs> That's all I'd say. Chronology plays a bigger part in our in our day-to-day lives, I'm afraid. So it does sometimes feel like it's coming somewhat out of left field. But... He does bring it's a lot of the students. It's always interesting to hear from him. Yeah, uh, Craig Sullivan got in touch. He actually, got in touch a couple of times. This is a new, uh, new one on me in terms of getting in with feedback and chat. So thanks, Craig at Sullivano nineteen seventy one. If you want to follow his Italian footballer and pass, fake, yeah, I guess. Yeah, possibly. Um, he says your brother's band track played at the end of episode one two eight was superb. Reminded me of the Clash or the Smiths. Good luck to them. High praise indeed. Have you told Matt? Yeah. I have. I yes. um, quoted the tweet tagging in Isla underscore music. I think is their Twitter handle. Cool. Uh, I think they put a new track up as well on their SoundCloud profile. There you if go. If you want to look for Isla the band on SoundCloud, yeah. yeah. Isla spelled A Y L A. Yep. Not as in Fisher. We have another. Oh, I don't talk. Isla Fisher, amazing. Um, we have. You're listening. Absolutely. You're listening. Super League perverts. Go on. She's on. She's, she'll be on the laminated five people. List. Oh, all right, laminated five people. Yeah. I wondered where you were going when we got to laminated. No, everyone knows gets a friend's reference, don't they? Um, no, I do now. Yeah, I just I think it's my, my maybe my maybe my dirty mind then. Where are we going? Oh yeah. Um, we were talking about your brother's band and, and 
Yeah, the, 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 I, they always think they're sort of more inspired by the Beatles because they all love the Beatles. But when yeah. I listen to their music, I, I hear more sort of 80s, new wave, post punk kind of stuff. The Beatles inspired pretty much everyone.